And then if others join us later, they can do that. And we'll have this uh, on the ESC YouTube channel for other folks who weren't able to join in person. Looks like we're recording. Okay, yeah. so uh, thanks. Uh, welcome uh, to the uh, ESC Texas Chapter Education Meeting of the Month. Uh, today, uh, we're gonna hear uh, about WAD Watchers and how energy management and engagement uh, can really complement uh, equipment-based ESPC projects. Before we get to that, the, uh, I'm going to make a couple of quick reminders, announcements. Uh, my name is Dub Taylor. I'm chair of the subcommittee for Texas ESC for Education. And the first one is that a reminder on December 2nd, we have our Texas chapter quarterly meeting. So if that's not on your calendar, uh, you might want to add that. The other is that we will not be having one of these education meetings in December. We're going to skip December, but we will be having one in January. January 20th would be our normal scheduled day, the third Wednesday of the month. And we don't yet have a topic, specific topic lined up for that. So if you have something in mind uh, that you would like to present or know about, let me know and we can get that scheduled. So with that, let me turn it over to our presenters today. Uh, we have two, uh, Ashley Williams with Austin ISD. <clears throat> she is the Energy Conservation Engagement Coordinator, and she's going to talk about how the uh, program that has been uh, instituted at Austin ISD to really engage campus level, facility level uh, folks on the behavioral aspects and uh, of, of enhancing performance contracting projects and, and extending them. <clears throat> has, has really been integrated in a successful way and is an interesting model that we think could be replicated uh, more throughout the state. And then we're going to take a, a deeper dive into a package uh, of uh, student engagement and energy literacy tools that the state has funded called Watt Watchers. You may have heard of this. It's focused on K-12 and uh, Juan Garcia with uh, Disco Learning Media, who's principal contractor involved in development of the content, is going to take that. So first, we're going to start with Ashley, and then we'll transfer to Juan. So Ashley, take it away. Thank you, Deb, and thanks to everyone for your time today. Um, so as Deb mentioned, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we can turn our projects into sustainable energy management programs. Um, and it's really taking the process um, past the point of your project completion to make sure that the project is actually doing what it said it was going to do. But then how can you add value and really partner with the district to make sure that this is not only happening um, on a sustainable level with projects, but that the schools have the support that they need to buy light strips or um, put together a fundraiser or to set up a Watt Watchers program um, and, and get the equipment that you need for that. Um, so we're gonna talk about how to do that sustainable energy management program. Um, and I just want to, to point out that the more districts that understand the value of this process, the better off our whole industry is going to be. So if we can all be out there advocating on behalf of energy management programs to support our projects, we're all going to be um, in a much better place. So you've probably seen the guidelines for energy management put out by the Department of Energy. Um, it's a really robust tool. Um, you guys are probably familiar with it, but there's also a, a K through 12 upgrade manual and that gets into a lot of the in intricacies that can be different whenever you're communicating about energy within a district. Um, the process is still the same though. We want to make a commitment. We're going to assess what our performance is, make goals, take action, implement it, measure it, and then celebrate what we've done and start that process all over again. Um, another thing that um, you might not have thought of whenever you think about school districts is ISO 50001 Ready. Um, this really makes sure that the program that you set up is well documented. That way anybody can step in and know what the process is. At this time of the year, we look at facilities this way. Every month we look at energy 
this way. And this is how we react to um, problems and um, create preventative maintenance programs and funding for our projects and all of that wonderful stuff. Um, so the, the guidelines for energy management, um, traditionally, whenever we're talking about an ESCO project, you've got one occupant audience and it's whoever's in that building. And as soon as you can get that sea level management support, it's kind of like, you know, you're, you're done with your part of getting that employee buy-in um, to the central mission. You just have to sell it to them and then they sell it to everyone. But in schools, it's definitely not that way. Um, in fact, anything that you use as a directive and, and take from the top level down can be looked at as um, overreaching. Uh, people don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> and um, teachers are a much different customer than we're used to dealing with. And um, they're the most important customer that, that we can have. I mean, we want them to be comfortable and to um, and to, to educate our kids in a comfortable and safe learning environment. Um, so Austin ISD um, partnered with performance services coming out of some of the project work that, what they did, that they did to launch the energy leadership program. Um, and it specifically highlights behavioral initi initiatives um, and low cost, no cost measures within the district. Um, so we've implemented a team at Austin ISD um, and the intention is that, so the, the contract is for five years for this program, but the intention is that Austin ISD will hire everyone on as permanent staff and part of their, um, and part of their team. Um, we also were able to implement energy management guidelines. It's something that Austin ISD has been trying to do for a really long time. So we're really proud that we just got those posted on the website this week. Um, and then we have um, other outreach like extended break shutdowns. That's one of the most important times in the year for school districts to save energy is when no one's around. Um, if nobody's in the classroom, they can't complain that their fan isn't running or um, that they don't have their 14 incandescent light bulb um, lamps running. So the energy leadership team, um, everybody that's in red here is a permanent employee of Austin ISD. Um, we report up through the directors of facilities and maintenance and then up through the CFO. So that's how the organization of Austin ISD is set up. That's what you want to see whenever you're working with a program. I mean, I mean, with the school district, because then you can actually sell the financial value of your performance services. Um, so we've got Ray, Ronald, Ray Torres. He's the energy and water manager. Um, also on our team is Tim Cantrell. He's the MEP supervisor. So all of the trades are in the room in our weekly meeting through Tim. And that's also really, really important. Um, Mark Ford is the operations manager for performance services. Um, he's really there to set up all of the nuts and bolts of the program. And as everything gets up and running um, with the energy conservation specialist and our technicians, um, then he'll slowly kind of step away. But the intention is that me as the energy engagement coordinator, Anna as the conservation specialist and our two full-time equivalent energy conservation techs will become permanent staff within Austin ISD. Um, I'm really lucky to have the position that I do with them. Um, I have a long background in energy consulting and um, it's never been my only job to say, hey, how can we get people to pay attention? Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So energy is the second highest cost at Austin ISD and probably everywhere. Um, and 30% of uh, energy is wasted in commercial buildings. I'm sure you guys have probably heard that stat before too. But whenever you're talking about it uh, to a school district, you have to be really careful about how you're framing waste. Um, anytime you say we saved this much energy or we didn't waste this much energy, somebody's going to come back and say, well, why didn't you? Um, so it can actually be a liability if we frame things in this way. So we always want to say that 30% could be saved. Um, anything that you find that's a problem is not a problem. It's an opportunity for them to improve. Um, and these are just a few photos. I, I like to show these. Um, to any audience that I present to you about this program. 
Um, Cause it really is a bunch of little bitty things that come together and it takes everybody to make a difference. Um, so talking about energy leadership culture, we always wanna make sure that we're providing a safe, productive and comfortable learning environment. So when it was 83 degrees outside in the middle of the afternoon and the building was so cold, there was condensation on all of the windows um, a teacher popped the window. I bet you that that teacher was not thinking, I want to really just waste some energy. I want to make the system work harder than it should. I want to open up my school to security risks. I, I want to wake up to a possum tomorrow when I get to school. Um, it's, it's never the teacher's intention. Most of the time, they're just not sure about what facilities even does within their um, within their organization. They don't think that they're gonna cause a fire hazard by daisy chaining um, all of these lovely um, extension cords of differing ages. They're thinking they need to have light in that part of the room so their children can learn. So we wanna make sure that we're asking how we can help. We're there for, for to help them. So report issues when you see them, talk to a colleague. Um, once you get people to buy into the program, they're going to be your best advocates. Um, and then always be open to uh, taking suggestions. We really want to get everyone at all levels of the organization um, to look for savings opportunities. And we want to celebrate their success because it takes every single one to, person to make a difference. Never let them forget. Um, Whenever you're going into a district, um, it's really helpful to look for existing programs or green initiatives that might already exist. That's where you're going to find energy champions within the district that you can promote things like Watt Watchers to. Um, it's also good to find out uh, who, the, who runs them behind the champions. How did they get started? Um, who funds it? How much does it cost? And how can we get in on that? Um, it's also good to look for existing programs. So we've got our curriculum and content pa partners. We're going to hear more about Watt Watchers here in a few minutes. Um, there's also the National Wildlife Federation's Eco Schools program. You can go in and search in your area to see if any of the schools um, participate here. And if so, um, as an ESCO, you won't be able to contact National Wildlife Federation and get their information, but it might be something that you can recommend that your energy manager does um, at the school district so that they can start to get their hands into, um, into the classroom. Because it's, it's really kind of hard to figure out if you come from an operations background. Um, you also want to look for other community organizations um, that support this kind of work. It might not be where you, where you think of it, but like, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Oh, so I just searched for um, community engagement in Dallas and I found a bike to school day. Um, there's also supporting organizations that they usually tout on those types of things. Um, so you can partner with those organizations to support the community and get your name out there and also um, be a good partner to the school district in that way. Always check to see um, with, the, with your local utilities if they have any kind of education programs um, for schools, many of them have field trips that they host, um, educational, like they have, a lot of them have a menu of things you can choose from. And a lot of times you can get um, someone to go into the schools and do a custom presentation um, for someone that you're trying to onboard. And I believe um, you'll hear a little bit about that with Watt Watchers in a few as well. So looking back at our guidelines for energy management, whenever we're talking about um, creating a culture within a school, people don't know what you can't tell them. So we have to give them access to information. Uh, people don't like being told what to do. So we need to ask for the best way forward with their input. Um, everybody likes to be told when they do a good job and everybody likes to make their own choices. So. Um, that's why it's important, important to remember that this is a partnership, not a dictatorship. And um, we need them in order for the program to succeed. So how do you present that information? It's a little bit different when you're talking to teachers instead of um, you know, a financial company or something. So um, you wanna make it fun, personal, 
and relatable. Um, we tend to think about only energy usage as what we're using in buildings, but that's really only a little less than 40% of all the energy that's used. You can capture a lot more audience if you talk about the fact that all the energy that we use is um, also related to food production and the transportation of goods and materials and you know all of these things that we use to create energy and then you know reuse it as we're occupying those buildings. Um, oops. I like to equate it to um, carbon emissions. Um, that's a bigger buzzword whenever we're, we're getting into schools, the, you know, the next generation is inspired to save Earth, uh, we hope. And um, so carbon emissions are, are a big deal for that. Um, I always like to carry this. I wish I had the video for this part, but um, it takes about one pound of coal to create one kilowatt hour. I didn't realize how much a pound of coal was. I had like a little sandwich bag I was gonna fill with charcoal and that wasn't enough. And I quickly realized that it was gonna take a whole gallon sized bag to fill up to equal one kilowatt hour. Um, so that's, it's always nice to provide a visual. Um, and then also each student at Austin ISD could charge their phones 152,000 times or once per day for 417 years. Um, so just trying to make the numbers make a little bit more sense. Um, kilowatt hours is not as exciting to everyone as it is to the people that are in this room. Um, remember that we're here to, here to help provide things to them, a safe and comfortable learning environment for the students, energy education curriculum, access to school and classroom resources. Um, teachers might, not think, oh, I can call and say, hey, do you have some watt meters I can borrow? We're trying to do an energy audit or what do we have available um, within the district? And then um, project-based learning opportunities is a huge buzz buzzword I've learned in education. Um, so if you're working with someone and you're trying to get that teaching and learning environment uh, or teaching and learning audience on your side, definitely use that term. Um, and Watt Watchers can help with that. Um, most importantly, uh, I just ask them for input. I'm going to tell a little bit a story about our wonderful teacher. Her name is Rhonda Barton. She's been instrumental in the design and rollout of the program. She told me what I needed to do, how I needed to communicate it, and what it was that people needed. Um, so having people on the inside that you're listening to, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you what you need to do. Um, she ended up creating a whole um, year's worth of activities based on energy off of our first meeting. She um, made all the, she sent out emails, like I didn't ask her to. <laughs> she sent out emails to get um, a shutdown squad together to unplug literally everything in the building um, the first time. And then as it came to spring break, by that time, she'd gotten the students involved and actually had them make Valentine's Day cards to give to all the other teachers to remind them to fill out the plug load survey so then we could calculate what the savings were for the whole year. Um, so it's just making those th types of things, those calculations that um, we probably take for granted. I know I did. Um, providing that information to schools can really um, help them frame what their work and what it is that you want them to do to help you. Um, so I just plugged in a couple resources here um, for you guys as reference. The Energy and Water Sustainability page from Austin ISD has a bunch of resources. It talks about our work, a link to our energy dashboard, and then um, all of these super handy things from the Department of Energy are were there for you. Um, I always like to close with this wonderful picture and it's, we can all change the world with our own two little hands. Um, and it's, it's a great way to, to close. And if you have student artwork, it always is a crowd pleaser. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Juan. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, this is Dub. While we're transitioning, I, I have a question and this just occurred to me. I'm, I think I'm pretty familiar with what you're doing with Austin ISD, but, but the footprint of the district is is pretty vast, really. 
and there's what 80 I, know, I can't remember how many campuses but it's a large district and you're one person um, how do you uh, sort of strategically engage at the campus level with you know such such a such a big set of customers if you will well, I mean, it's really just starting with um, teachers that are and campuses that are already involved in other green initiatives. Um, National Wildlife Federation, I mentioned before, they're a huge partner. Um, so I think it was like once a year, we can ask them for the list of all the teachers that have signed up for the Eco Schools program. And we start emailing them. Um, and that's how we get like onboarding for engagement. There's not a one size fits all approach to gotcha. it. Um, so the schools, they don't even have the same like organization. So pretty much the only thing that every high school has is the like a campus advisory committee um, and the PTA and a student government. And that's like the most uh, consistent this consistency that we have across the district, but even though those like titles exist, they don't even necessarily do the same things on those campuses. Yeah. Um, so it's really working um, with them one on one and I'm in the process now I've been there for a year. Um, you know, so now I'm starting to figure out what tools to provide to everybody. Okay. Um, and but not I yeah, so so not a not an all campuses at once, but more of a identify the warm leads and and build out from there. Right, right. Yeah. And then the second part of that will be um, is targeting the high energy users and figuring out you know what we can do with those campuses to increase education. Um, if it's a user issue, or if not, how much it needs to how much it's going to cost to fix whatever mechanical issues causing the energy spike. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thanks. So we're going to uh, transition now uh, to hear more about Watt Watchers, uh, which I mentioned at the at the outset is a project that was reinstituted, funded uh, by the State Energy Conservation Office with using Department of Energy uh, dollars uh, and working with University of Texas and and others, including uh, Disco Learning Media to develop this new and update update the content. Uh, and we're gonna hear now from Juan Garcia with Disco. Uh, so take it away, Juan. Thank you so much, Deb. Uh, and, and Ashley as well for that uh, uh, introduction and talking us through uh, Austin ISD. So everybody can, uh, can hear me now, is that right? Yes. Excellent, I appreciate that, Deb. Thank you so much. All right, well, let's talk about uh, Watt Watchers of Texas and, and our, our theme, our motto, Texas is too good to waste. I actually did a, a great overview of implementation in places where Watt Watchers of Texas uh, can be used within a school district. And uh, right now we're gonna take a, a deeper dive and, and really talk about what Watt Watchers is and how you uh, could potentially work with um, organizations uh, to implement it uh, for your needs as well. So uh, what is Watt Watchers of Texas? Or really at the core, it's an energy efficiency program and it's designed to help schools and families save energy and save money. Uh, the original program uh, began in 1985 and it slowly expanded um, over several years and several decades. And as Dub had mentioned, in, in 2018, uh, CECO began working with the University of Texas at Austin and Dr. Michael Weber, who's the, uh, the principal investigator from the Weber Energy Group, uh, as well as my organization, Disco Learning Media, uh, to really help revitalize, reboot, refresh, you know, all of the above uh, the, the program, which was at that point still a paper-based program. So the way it originally worked is uh, you would uh, sign up, uh, you would get a binder then through the mail, it would have uh, newsletters and uh, lesson plans, activities, a variety of, of material that you could uh, print out, make copies of for students uh, in, in school. So uh, what we did is we wanted to uh, update content and really refresh it so that it felt more modern, uh, but also it was very important that Watt Watchers move to an online presence so that it was much easier for us to share. And of course, in the spirit of 
uh, maintaining um, you know, our, 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 our greenness. We wanted to uh, reduce the number of pages that were being printed and, and, and things that were being put into the mail and sent out. Bear with me one moment here while the, there we go. So as I mentioned at the core, Watt Watchers is an energy efficiency program. Uh, it is behavioral and the way that it works is through the student patrol. So that is uh, uh, something that was really tried and true from the original 1985 program where students would go up and down the hallways looking for energy waste. And as Ashley mentioned, you know, that energy waste is an opportunity for savings. So students would look for lights that were left on, uh, maybe projectors that were left on, or uh, leaky faucets, uh, uh, toilets that were not flushing properly and would help report that through the student patrols program that they were doing, um, depending on you know, daily, weekly basis, whatever worked best for their school. Today, now we have this online program, we have over 125 TEKS aligned lessons and activities that are available in English and Spanish. Uh, this is by far one of the biggest uh, selling points for educators. Teachers need to have content that has been aligned to the uh, TEKS science standards. Uh, also expanding it into Spanish earlier this year uh, really helped double up um, the, the, the program in terms of who could use the program across the state. And so we've seen a tremendous amount of growth uh, as a result of having uh, both the TEKS alignment and having Spanish available. Um, like many of you, COVID and the pandemic, it's impacted us where it was a traditionally in-school program. We were able to, uh, earlier this year, adapt Watt Watchers into an at-home program. We've been adding games and other resources that make more sense uh, for families and students who are doing virtual learning or hybrid learning to use in their environment. Uh, we also have, through our resources, Lots of videos, printables, interactive games, and so much more that's available. And as Ashley had also uh, mentioned earlier, the Eco Schools USA program uh, is an official partner with Watt Watchers as well. So where we are on the behavioral side, uh, Eco Schools USA is on the audit side. So it was a great partnership, uh, really a good match where they're able to help uh, students, teachers, administrators really look at you know, what are the energy savings that they have in their particular school or district? And the Watt Watchers program is really helping uh, uh, facilitate and help uh, our educators and students better understand, you know, what, why, how, you know, how, how can we do it? And here are the ways through project-based learning, through videos, and a variety of other means that we have available on the site. So who can participate? As we mentioned earlier, all students, teachers, and now families, we really encourage that uh, everyone take advantage of this program because saving, uh, saving energy is really everyone's responsibility, but uh, saving money is a good motivator for sure. Why should students be involved? This is a question that we get asked time and time again. You know, students are already busy, they're overwhelmed. This year is certainly no exception, lots of things going on, but Energy efficiency really is everyone's responsibility and the school environment is a big part of the student's world. So now is a good time to start promoting those habits to help students learn more about energy literacy, water literacy, and think about conservation and sustainability. So really at the end of the day, why use it? Well, as Deb mentioned, it, you know, SECO helped uh, fund the program. So um, thanks to SECO, we've been able to make this uh, free and available. Uh, it's factual, trusted content that's been developed by instructional designers, both at UT Austin and with Disco Learning Media. Um, this year, I I'm sure uh, you're seeing more spending and less saving due to COVID-19, due to policies, due to best practices, things that, that have to go in place that weren't there before. So having a behavioral program is really a good way of being able to save more because at least we can think about that energy waste and that loss and, and try to curb that. Um, Texas Education Code 44902 right, requires the districts to reduce their electric consumption by 5%. 
So it's an important way of being able to, again, leverage this behavioral program uh, for needs uh, across districts and across organizations. Um, and like I mentioned before, it is free. It's 100% free, thanks to the funding from SECO, as well as our corporate partners from ITRON and CPS Energy. Uh, we've been able to, to do a lot and keep this program free, open, and accessible for all. So as I mentioned, we've transitioned to uh, having both an, uh, uh, an at-home program now as, uh, as well as uh, in school. So if you were to go to the Watt Watchers website, uh, this is what you would see. It's essentially a choose your own adventure, if you will, where uh, if you're going, you can choose which program you want to go into. And when you get there, know that if you choose the at school program, again, there's two different pathways as well, where you could choose student patrols, or activities and lessons, depending on what um, you know, what you want to uh, to to do and, and what you want to achieve. The reason that we make it so flexible, the the, the reason that Watt Watchers is so scalable, is because we hear this. You know, oftentimes uh, some schools uh, may have uh, an energy or environment program already in place, and Watt Watchers can be absorbed easily into that. Those students can do those student patrols. Uh, but sometimes schools don't have that and they don't have an educator who could serve as an ambassador or a cheerleader. And so in this case, we recommend the activities and lessons that are again, all TEKS aligned, available in English and Spanish and, and, and it's full K through 12. So really there's, there's content for every age group and some, some of the activities and lessons might, you know, it, you could do it over a 45 minute class and some, some of them for, especially for the older students, uh, it could take uh, days or weeks. So we, we really do have a very flexible uh, program. And that's one of the, the big selling points for the educator. So as Ashley had mentioned earlier, you know, nobody wants to be told what to do. But if you show them that there is this free resource, uh, educators, their eyes light up. They get very excited because this is something that can really help them fill in the gap. And, uh, and something that they can, can leverage to help uh, their students learn more about energy saving and, and conservation. Uh, I'm going to see if this video works real quick. I know sometimes it can be a little bit laggy, but this is a, a really good example from Pflugerville ISD of a Watt Watcher student patrol in action. The first room, We'll go down to EDP, um, Miss Norris and Miss Roach. The point of Watt Watchers is to conserve energy and resources to save money. Electricity costs a lot, and so we're trying to save on that. What we do is make sure all the lights are off, and if not, then we'd give them a ticket. You will walk around a hallway or a part of the school with the clipboard and the basket, and you will peek through the window of the door. And lights are in use. Okay. X means there's lights on, but there's no one in there. We are putting in a VAD card, so next time they um, come in, they'll remember to turn off the lights. I think teachers feel like Maybe it might not be their fault. They're, they must feel like, hmm, I need to do better next time. But they might just tell the class and give them a reminder that we left the light on and we're trying to save money. So next time, guys, just turn the light off when you leave the classroom. Since I started, um, I've noticed a huge change. There's been a lot of teachers uh, turning off their lights now. I haven't seen a lot of X's this year. Because they noticed about, they noticed that they might have been getting cards more often last year and they're trying to be maybe more responsible. I feel good because I mean, like, that, that means they're actually paying attention in the first place. It's kind of a habit for me now. Like, when I go into rooms and go out of rooms, it's kind of habitful because I usually, like, I'm always having my hand out turning off the lights. One, two, three, watchers. All right, I really love that video. It's a, 
a uh, great example again of the student patrols. And uh, I never really put this in my official bullets, but uh, one thing the students certainly love is having the opportunity to tattle on their teachers. So especially at the elementary level, uh, that really, that really uh, helps sell the students on the opportunity. Um, here's another example from our friends at Cypress Fairbanks ISD. They, uh, just like you saw in Pflugerville, they, they were able to print out some official Watt Watcher student patrol t-shirts um, here. And so uh, they, you can see the students are excited about being able to, uh, to patrol the, the hallways in the school and that opportunity to help with the conservation and sustainability of their school environment. Um, from our friends at Arlington ISD, uh, here uh, we have the energy management team. And uh, this past year, they actually created a, a district-wide initiative uh, around Watt Watchers, and they called it I Am a Watt Watcher to help them uh, stress and improve that uh, conservation, sustainability, uh, good habits, best practices, good choices throughout their schools. Unfortunately, of course, because of, of what happened and the um, uh, you know, stay at home uh, orders that went into place right after a spring break period here across the state. Um, they weren't able to complete, uh, but they're hoping to pick that program back up again in the springtime. And then I know you also heard um, just a while ago from, from Ashley. And so uh, everything that's happening within Austin ISD is a great example as well. And I know that the uh, slides that Ashley shared earlier are going to be available for you to, to look at later on as well. And those links and resources that she's, she has, I highly recommend going to check those out. Absolutely love the way that uh, Ashley and Austin ISD have been able to uh, use the sustainability program page in order to help uh, 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 promote resources and other materials and opportunities for students and teachers to use. And as Ashley also mentioned, the National Wildlife Federation partnership that we have, um, again, is, is, is a, a good match because they have that audit program, whereas we have the behavioral program with the project-based learning, with the activities and the lessons and the TEKS alignment. Uh, so that has been uh, a really uh, fun and great partnership uh, that we've uh, established with them earlier this year. So if you are interested in that, as Ashley mentioned, highly recommend going through the uh, facilities managers, the energy managers for the districts that you're serving, uh, they're the ones that can reach out uh, and then work with somebody regionally uh, to, from, the, uh, from the National Wildlife uh, Federation program. So talking about, um, again, a, a deeper dive into uh, Watt Watchers, one of the big changes that we had from the original program moving into the modernized program is creating these characters of Little Texan Ann or Texan. And uh, the reason we did it is because we wanted, uh, we wanted heroes, you know, someone that especially the younger students could really rally around. Um, and, and these are the quote unquote Watt Watchers. And, of course, like any good hero, there's always got to be a villain, and the villains that we have are the Wasters Gang. So the Wasters Gang are essentially entropy personified. So you've got waste that's happening, uh, lights that are left on, uh, faucets that are leaking, you know the Wasters Gang was there. Um, we also have an eight-page comic that's available, uh, works really well for K th uh, uh, kindergarten through third grade. And um, students have the opportunity to read the comic and better understand, especially at a, a younger level, why they need to, um, you know, to, to learn these best practices. Another big change that we had from the original program that focused uh, almost entirely around electricity is that we've now expanded to these six modern energy topics of electricity, water, materials and recycling, cooling and heating, transportation and food. I also love uh, in Ashley's presentation, she was able to, to talk about and cover that um, when we're thinking about energy, uh, when we're thinking about being resourceful, that uh, it's coming from a variety of places now that even if we're thinking about what we're doing within the school, it's not just about, you know, are we leaving the lights on, are our projectors on, what, what leaks are we finding, but also you know, what are we having shipped to our school, how is that being used, uh, what are we doing with food, uh, you know, to, to conserve? Uh, what are we doing with recycling? We have a lot of activities around this, in fact, where uh, you can reuse certain things if a school's got a garden, uh, an outdoor garden area, or materials that can be reused as, as again, projects 
uh, for students and teachers, different art projects. So uh, we've really expanded beyond, you know, the original program to make it more flexible, like I've mentioned. Now, when you go to the Watt Watchers site, um, if you are an educator or you're a parent, a guardian, somebody who's interested in, in using the site, the way that you would actually do that is that you can choose a theme, like you see a uh, center screen left-hand side of, of this the site. So you choose your theme. And after you choose your theme, uh, you can then choose a grade level. So you can target it very specifically. Um, and then here's an example you can see here that if we chose the theme of water in fourth grade, that we've got these eight activities that show up. Um, and just right here is a sample activity. Uh, this is something that gets teachers very excited when we when we show them that they can see very clearly at the top who's the grade level it's for the theme that it's um, uh, that it's been created for an activity overview all the materials that you're going to need the time commitment and at the very bottom of the screen the teaks alignment so uh, already you know it's a it's a program that's just ready to go out of the box now, something new that we've added very recently to help uh, assist educators, this was something that they had also asked for, was the ability to search specifically by TEKS or by keyword. So sometimes even just within the theme and the grade band, uh, that's not enough. They, they want to get more granular, more detailed. Well, we can do that. There's a search function at the top. And you can see here, for instance, if we're searching for TEKS SS78A, they can certainly do something as specific as that. Now, as I also mentioned uh, earlier, that uh, we, we have these at-home resources now, and uh, that's uh, something that we've also seen growing steadily uh, over, uh, over the last uh, few months while students have been learning from home or doing hybrid learning. And the way that the at-home program differs is it really is tailored to the home environment. So we're focusing more on, on things that students really have more control over with their families, such as replacing light bulbs or monitoring the air conditioning or the heater or you know what you're doing with your dishwasher or your laundry, how much, how much water you're using. And we have all of the guides and we have uh, um, a lot of uh, reporting materials that they can use directly on the site. Of course, we always encourage the educators to take advantage of the additional resources this is actually something here that's going to be very val valuable for all of you because we've got on this resource page, um, we've got the teacher's guide, we've got a video that shows a past training session, as well as a glossary. And this is a really good way of introducing the program to districts, to educators. They like seeing this, you know, right out the gate that what they want to see is that we have really a robust program. These aren't marketing materials. We're not trying to sell on anyone on anything here. We, we just want them to take advantage of this free state sponsored program. And this page is really good. We've, we've uh, heard uh, through the grapevine, this is a really good way of being able to get, uh, you know, your stakeholders on board. Watt Watchers is now also a part of Smart Energy Education. Smart Energy Education is um, a, a larger initiative that we're doing that really focuses on energy, water, conservation, sustainability, and some other programs that are um, especially uh, valuable for some older students, uh, uh, middle school and high school, can be found uh, on this site. So uh, very happy again that, uh, that Watt Watchers is a part of this because there's a lot of interconnectivity and in some of our other programs, such as resourcefulness, our uh, energy and water e-course or energy 101, which is really uh, the way I like to call it. It's like everything energy A through Z. Uh, we talk about uh, you know, energy topics. Um, we talk about power generation. We talk about nomenclature, uh, energy in the environment, and, and then drill down into uh, all the specific forms of energy uh, it's a great resource, um, and that, that one's also available for free if you go through Smart Energy Education and follow the links to, um, to get access to that. So with that, um, I am um, happy to uh, take any questions that uh, you might have um, and certainly encourage uh, all of you to reach out to me. 
if you uh, if you have any questions that come up uh, after today's session, uh, certainly happy to to you know talk through details and opportunities and, and um, you know the way we've been using it in uh, in other districts across the state. Great, <clears throat> thanks, Juan. So uh, for the folks that are on. I'm not sure if you have the ability to unmute and ask questions directly. If you if you do and you have any questions, uh, now's the time, or you can type them into the chat or Q and A box. So if they do want to talk, um, there should be like a raise hand or request to talk option, and I will I can okay. open that up. But um, chat is uh is probably okay. also so i want to just kind of summarize a couple of things one uh the purpose of this kind of introduction i guess to to these two topics or maybe it's just an update if you're if you're familiar with them is is one i think you know from a esc standpoint and from a a project uh, perspective and and service to customers i think what aisd has done is is pretty unique and an interesting model. Uh, you know, through their through their ESCO, essentially they have said, you know, we want to engage uh, the campuses, uh, we want to engage our facilities folks, and they built that into their overall proposal and their project. And, and AISD was obviously interested in, in having that, but the, one of the challenges I think with any sort of engagement and, and outreach and kind of the people side of, of an ESPC project uh, is, is the district resources are always, you know, thin, they're not there. Uh, how can we, you know, possibly post a position for an energy management coordinator when we can't even, you know, adequately fund teacher salaries. And so I think this approach of building it into an ESPC project to sort of prove the concept and uh, with enough runway to show the value for the district is is a, is a good way to do it. And then as Ashley said, the intent is that after the term of the contract that, you know, the folks that are that were brought in uh, as contractors, essentially, you know, uh, transfer over uh, to be district employees, thus, you know, really institutionalizing these efforts. So I think that's, uh, uh, I think I think it's a, an interesting model and certainly one that could be replicated. And you know, you can you can point to AISD as here's how to do it. Uh, I think the other thing is, you know, from an ESCO standpoint, you probably know that you know as soon as you leave the premises uh, and and the projects are completed and the work is done, uh, you start to lose your efficiency gains almost immediately. If the equipment is not maintained, if an optimized system or systems together uh, are not maintained in that way, uh, you know, a lot of those gains are lost. And, you know, that then can challenge the, the guarantee aspect. So, you know, having allies at the campus level and in the facilities team is certainly better than, you know, them viewing the work that's been done adversarially. Uh, there's there's one, st uh, one story, uh, an energy man school energy manager told me one time, uh, that illustrates you know, the point of everyone pulling in the same direction. And he said that they had gone, uh, I guess, in, in the uh, one of the buildings, uh, one of the school buildings, campuses, where there was a science wing, uh, they had uh, either removed the thermostats or they weren't adjustable or they had locked them, but somehow disabled classroom control of thermostats and temperature, and they were controlling it all centrally. Well, uh, you know, one of the science teachers figured out you know, it's too warm in my classroom. I know how that thermostat works. And so she went to Target and bought a, a swing lamp uh, with a 100 watt bulb and focused it in on that thermostat. And of course, her classroom got cold. Well, then everyone else on the wing went, did the same thing. And uh, they were looking at their at their data from their energy management system at the at the school district level wondering what the heck's going on in this the wing of this building and they went there after hours and saw the lights you know not on but they figured out what was going on and said okay we need to do a better job of you know not doing things you know to our teachers and occupants but making sure they understand what we've done why we've done them and and how to accommodate their needs so 
uh, that's really important. And then, you know, I think the Watt Watchers tool as a toolkit, again, it's free, it's provided, it's vetted, it's objective. Um, this is a, a great a great way to complement uh, those things that you're doing uh, with a, sort of a ready-made uh, plug-and-play system. And the schools, I think, that have taken advantage of that, Watt Watchers in this new modern kind of electronic electric for, electronic format, uh, easier to distribute, e easier to update, uh, have really seen benefits. So uh, please take advantage of both. Uh, let's see. Looking at Q&A or chats, I guess, uh, Ashley and Juan, you can read these as well. Uh, from Matt Lombardo, at uh, Ashley and Juan, great presentations, very intriguing information. We wanted, if we wanted to induce, reduce, introduce one of our district partners to Watt Watchers, how would you recommend we start? And so Juan is responding to that, and and the the answer is contact Juan. Uh, there is a kind of a, uh, a step by step engagement process. It's a lot of information, and if you just dump it on a teacher or a school district, it's a little overwhelming. I think. Uh, so there's sort of a, a logical way to to introduce the information and at the right levels to to get the right buy-in. Juan, do you want to unmute and correct me or expand on any of that? Yeah, thanks, Deb, and and thanks, Matt, as well, and everyone for for your time today. Uh, Matt, great question, and uh, and yeah, I think the easiest is if you wouldn't mind uh, sending me an email or putting your email in the chat box here. Um, we have a flyer, a little one pager that we like to send out, and that's a really good place. Uh, thanks, Matt. Um, to get started, because that flyer, it's it's um, it's it's digestible. Um, you know, it's got all the high level bullet points. We find that that is often a very good way, especially if you're going to, you know, the top level district folks uh, to to get them intrigued and interested. You can say, look, you know, look at these partners. They're working with the University of Texas at Austin. They're working with the National Wildlife Foundation. Uh, this is being directly funded from SECO and Department of Energy. So uh, that's always a really intriguing um, introduction from them. And then um, I'm happy to give a presentation almost similar to today's presentation. Uh, to folks that you you would like me to chat through or chat with and we can we can talk through um you know what what sort of situation they're in and, and opportunities and and where they could get started and Juan, if you um send that one pager over to me i'll get it out to the full membership um in the follow-up email to today's webinar excellent thank you so much cassidy yeah, absolutely um so just kind of, oh, sorry, Ashley, go oh, ahead. Just real quick, I wanted to add, like, if you're looking for what schools to target and how to figure that out, I would first look at any school that you've completed a project at. And, um, you know, you can sell it as like, oh, let me do this occupant training to make sure that everybody knows how the building works. And then it, it'll kind of naturally maybe start that conversation about continuing Watt Watchers and, um, uh, and going through the event schedule that Juan will go over in depth late, later. <laughs> but as far as the foot in the door, just, um, you know, when you're talking to energy managers and not somebody that's gonna necessarily be gung-ho about trying to push out an educational initiative, like sell it to them as getting someone else to help your project succeed. Yeah, that that's a, that's a really good perspective on that, Ashley. I appreciate that because, you know, sometimes we'll hear, I mean, especially to, this year, right? And we get it. Um, there's a lot going on and we don't want people to feel like this is on top of or one more thing in addition to something to add. Um, what I hear from teachers time and time again is that when this information finally gets to them, they are so excited because they cannot find the resources that they need that really focus in, on energy water, uh, environmental, sustainability, conservation. It's, um, it's, there's some things that are out there, uh, but oftentimes there's a, you know, there might be a paywall or the content that they have, you know, they don't know where it's really coming from. It's not necessarily something that, that's vetted or, or, or feels trusted. And so educators especially like uh, using these resources because it's so user friendly. It's it, you can dive in. You can use as little or as much of this program as you want, and that's what we keep seeing time and time again. So that's that's something else to stress that this is 
not in addition to or on top of, but it's really something that can merge very easily and very well with what, um, with what educators are doing. And I should point out that right now, a lot of school districts across the state are really focusing on their in energy and environmental units, especially in some of the older age groups like uh, middle and high school. So now would be a good time to start kind of putting the bug in folks' ear and, and, and testing the waters if you're interested in, in doing this. And to underline again, Juan, you mentioned this in your in your presentation. If you're if you're not an educator, you may not realize how important it is for uh, when when we say the content is TEKS aligned. Uh, that is really important because the science teachers, you know, are required to you know teach the the TEKS standards, and so they that that's what they have to do. And then anything beyond that, if they have time, is sort of considered supplemental. So by having all of this information aligned to TEKS, it really does mean it's plug and play and they can check the boxes and say, we are hitting these, these, different, uh, these different TEKS criteria. So uh, there is a lot of good inf you know, general uh, educational information about energy, but it probably is not TEKS aligned. And this is, and that's what really makes Watt Watchers different. Um, maybe just in, briefly in our last minute, <clears throat> um, with the AISD program development, Ashley, I know that you weren't necessarily part of that um, from day one, but can you clarify a little bit, like, did was AISD looking for an engagement behavioral um, program when it was going into its um, ESCO search, or was it something that performance services offered, or kind of how did that conversation start? So yeah, I definitely wasn't there for the beginning. Um, from what I understand though, it was, um, so we, we had one, performance services had won a lot of bond work. I wanna say that in the beginning, there might've been 12 or 13 projects, but due to school closures and just things changing in the last two years since we applied for the bond, um, there was still like money in the budget. So um, they, uh, Performance Services has rolled this program out um, in several other entities, and they were like, well, you know, let's, let's propose this, this program for them. Um, the district is really sustainability focused. Um, we're really lucky to have that uh, to lean on here. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they, they basically said, hey, why not? Why, how can you deny like spending this money that's going to go away if you don't and we're by the way we're going to save you five times as much if you put, put these people into place um <laughs> it was such a you know great and i think really beneficial um like coming together of good circumstances so it's, it's awesome yeah, well we're yeah uh i guess we're at time uh for those of you on, we will, uh, there'll be a follow-up email. We will have this recording uh, on the ESPC, on the Texas, sorry, not the ESPC, Texas ESC uh, chapter YouTube page and, and archived uh, for viewing later if you have other colleagues uh, that you'd like to uh, introduce to it as well. And then we'll also have Ashley and Juan's information uh, provided. So I guess at that point, at this point, Cassie, unless there's anything else, do you want to end for today? That's it. Thanks, guys. Okay.